Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Hummingbird Resources PLC Investor Presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged. They could be submitted at any time using the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Please simply type in your questions at any time and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during today's meeting. However, the company can review all questions uh, published today and will make those responses available on the Investor Meet company platform. Before we begin, we'd like to submit the following poll. If you give that your kind attention, I'm sure the company would be most grateful. I'd now like to hand over to CEO Dan Betts. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks very much. And thanks, anybody, for um, dialing in and listening. The purpose of this call is to go through the Q4 um, results, which were released two days ago, and to give an update on uh, trading performance with an outlook to the financial year 2024. Um, with me today on the call, you've got Tom Hill, Finance Director for the group, and Ed Montgomery, who Managing Director of Corporate Development. I will run through this presentation. Um, there's quite a lot of slides and information to get through, but I will do it as efficiently as I can. I'll hand over to Tom for the finance section, and then at the end, there'll be opportunity for anybody to ask any questions they want. So without further ado, let me let me go through the materials, which I hope are available to you. Um, during 2023, Hummingbird met the middle range of its guidance of 80 to 90,000 ounces, and the all-in um, sustaining cost for the group for the year was $1,361 an ounce. We're also proud of the safety record across both sites. Um, Carusa achieved 2 million injury-free hours during construction, which was a fantastic achievement. And I think that safety has been uh, at the front of everyone's mind and continuing improvement being made across the group there. So in terms of the um, operating statistics, Carusa was obviously a huge focus for the group and we successfully constructed and built Carusa on time and on budget. Um, we have then had challenges ramping up as efficiently as we would have liked, but we can talk more about that later. And we reached the end of the year with both the plant um, achieving nameplate production and the mining fleet able to achieve contracted rates. The gold production for um, the quarter was 14,419 ounces, a softer quarter, but that was anticipated and that meant that we achieved the middle range of guidance. The ASIC for the quarter at $1,700 an ounce reflects largely those lower ounce profiles and it meant that the ASIC for the year came in at $1,361 an ounce. In terms of BCMs moved, um, it, it was a lot of uh, material moved in Q4, 1.8 million BCMs with a total of just under 6 million BCMs for the year um, as, as per plan. So nothing dramatic in those numbers. In terms of the financial comparisons and performance for the year, the, um, the group revenue for uh, financial year 2023 was $159.4 million, 25.2 in, um, in Q4. In terms of the operating cash cost for the group is $112.5 million. And the average price, gold price achieved for the group across um, the year was $1,928 an ounce. Tom may talk more about uh, gold price protection going forward as we look to deleverage for 2024 and our strategy with the gold price. Um, the group achieved an EBITDA of $34.5 million for the year. Obviously, the softer quarter in Q4 meant um, a very small EBITDA in Q4. So moving on to the operational performance. Um, I've really covered a lot of this, but the average grade for the quarter was another factor for the softer quarter as we processed San Amali East at 1.66 grams a tonne. Um, recoveries and plant performance held up well. There were uh, some additional issues with the plant in Q4. There was additional downtime with the mill, um, having some unexpected downtime that's factored into this, this performance. That's obviously all remedied now and the plant is working perfectly. Um, if we go on to Carusa, we produce 6,000 ounces in the year. Obviously, most of this appearing in Q4 as we ramped up mining volumes and got deeper in the pits. We are now um, largely at the bottom of the oxide zone, getting into the fresh rock where we anticipate much less artisanal depletion. Obviously, a lot harder for 
artisanal miners to mine in fresh rock than um, oxide material. The uh, challenge of the last month has been that on just before Christmas, I think on 17th of December, as we have communicated, there was a disastrous um, explosion at the fuel depot in Guinea in Conakry that really took out pretty much the whole nation's diesel supply. And this caused uh, untold challenges for obviously mining fleets and operating the plant, but supply chain logistics and um, the whole country really. Uh, this situation has been resolved. The fuel is now flowing again. Um, the mining fleet is back up to full capacity with the fourth fleet uh, coming on stream in the next couple of weeks. And the plant is fully operational, operating above uh, nameplate. So where we stand today, obviously, this was a um, very difficult, challenging, unforeseen event that has had an impact on our ability to ramp up as quickly as we wanted to over the last month. But I think the team managed it as calmly and well as they could have done and everything is back up um, to full speed ahead now. This graphic is to show um, the location of our mining in the in the main pit at um, Carusa, it's called Coco. Um, the high grade areas of the ore body that we're hoping to access are obviously right upon us now. So the point of this slide is to show you um, not only is the plant and the fleet now ramped up, we are now accessing the profile in the pit where we need to, to get the grade to the plant. A little bit about the Doobie Gold project in Liberia. In Q4, Hummingbird converted its 51% interest into in the project into a 51% interest in Pasifino Gold. Um, during, during the Q4, perhaps it was at the start of this year, Tom will have to clarify, but obviously Hummingbird underwent a placement of $27 million or just $28 million exactly, I think. Um, Two million of those have been invested into Pasifino, which is it further increased Hummingbird's stake to 53%. Um, we have subsequently had a board meeting and we are working very closely with Pasifino to take the project forward. There are a number of areas in the feasibility study where we think there can be material uh, wins on the economics. Um, these namely are the power, um, power supply and plan for powering the mine and the recoveries and metallurgical studies that I think would have a material impact. So we are now getting more involved working with the Pasifino team to go about these work programs. And at the same time, we have budgeted to put some holes into nearby higher grade um, targets uh, where we think there's a, a real chance of finding some higher grade uh, gold that could help kickstart the you know, cash flow when the mine is built. Another slide that I wanted to labor on is our ESG performance. Um, a lot of this stuff goes on in the background and isn't talked about, but it's hugely valuable for us and our ability to be able to operate at both sites. Environmentally, um, we are doing a whole number of projects across both mines in terms of providing water, providing um, tree plantations and focusing on rehabilitating any of the environmental areas near the mine. In terms of safety, we continue with our um, health rollout programs into the community, malaria prevention programs and malnutrition programs, which have been extremely uh, well received. And in terms of economic development, we are fostering a number of projects such as chicken farms and market gardens and uh, micro businesses that can help local communities to earn a living during and after the life of the mine. Uh, at that point, my voice, so I'm going to hand over to Tom Hill to go through the um, numbers. Uh, thank you very much, Dan. I'd like to just quickly talk through the uh, financial numbers for the quarter and the year. Uh, during the quarter, as it was a lower production quarter, we sold 12,952 ounces of gold at an average price of $1,946. That took the full year sales to 82,652 at an average price of $1,928. Operating costs for the quarter were a little bit lower than other quarters at $22 million, taking the full year operating costs to $111, sorry, $111 million. Um, the all-instaining costs for the gold produced in the quarter was $1,701. This was 
driven by the lower production level and also by the um, higher strip ratio on the initial access to this Armada yeast pit. This results in a full year ASIC of $1,361. Again, due to the lower production quarter, the EBITDA for the quarter was relatively modest at $200,000, bringing the full year EBITDA to $34.5 million. Um, we ended the year with gross debt of 148 million, um, 8 million cash in the bank, leaving a net debt of 140 million. Um, the cash balance was after the first tranche of the placing of approximately $5 million. The balance of the placing of $23 million was received in January. Um, due to the, the big debt profile um, to repay over the year, over the year of 2024, um, as previously announced, we put in place price protection over 20,000 ounces over the first three quarters, at an average price of um, putting an average floor on the price of over, just over $2,000. Um, I'd like to now hand back to Dan for the rest of the presentation. Thanks, Tom. So moving forward, just to highlight a couple of the um, key achievements during the year, the completion of the Crusoe mine is obviously a huge achievement for having been turning it into a multi-mining company. The construction largely um, happened during COVID. There were a number of a political coups in West Africa. There were huge challenges logistically and supply chain wise. And to deliver this mine on time and on budget was a was an achievement. I think everybody can be rightly proud of. Obviously, though, now all of our attention turns to ramping it up successfully. Um, in terms of the plant performance, that has been largely achieved. There are constantly uh, little tweaks and niggles, but largely the plant has been delivered to a good standard and we're, we're happy with the performance of the plant. The challenge has been the mining volumes and the late mobilization of the mining fleet, which we've talked about a lot over the last year. A lot of pressure and work went on to redeeming that situation during the last part of last year. And full fleet and full capacity and full performance was achieved just as we went into Christmas and then uh, got slightly sideswiped by the fuel situation. But the, the ramp up has now recontinued. The fleet is operating again now. And we are now, you know, um, all focuses on getting those volumes to the mill as quickly as possible. Additionally, during the year, if I change to uh, Yam Falila at Mali, the underground at Kamana East is obviously a key part of the company's long-term plans going forward. Um, significant part of 2025's all will come from the underground. So the development of the underground uh, is a serious focus for the group. And it started and delivered in, in a positive way during the year. I think at the moment we're nearly 170 meters of development achieved and the professionalism and organization around this development is improving all the time. So this, this project, you'll hear more about this as we get deeper and closer to accessing ore from the underground at Yam Falila. Also during the year um, to access one of the pits at Yam Falila, the Sanamali East pit, required a village resettlement, which was achieved three months ahead of uh, ahead of time and on budget with no disruptions and very positive community relations. So this is the sort of activity that can catch you if you're not well prepared. And I think the team did a fantastic job in uh, delivering this ahead of schedule. If we look forward to 2024, obviously uh, this is a huge year for Hummingbird, you know, more than doubling our production and turning us into a multi-asset mining company across multiple jurisdictions. The guidance for the year is 75 to 85,000 ounces at uh, Yam Falila and at Carusa 90 to 115,000 ounces, giving us group guidance of 165 to 200,000 ounces for the year. The ASIC guidance for the year is a, a, each mine and a group ASIC of under $1,500 an ounce. The range of the guidance is wide, purely because of the um, exact timing and impact of ramp up at Carusa and when the high, high grade ore starts producing um, at Carusa. So this is uh, a, a wide ranging guidance and conservative guidance that we will look to um, tighten up and provide refined guidance later in the year. I think a little bit about what we are focused on. Obviously, there is strong organic growth from Carusa, and this year will um, will evidence that. 
This should produce strong free cash flow generation and the large focus of this year is to deleverage our balance sheet, which we are looking to pay down aggressively and strengthen the balance sheet to give us more flexibility to do um, to develop the company further. So the other strategic um, direction that Hummingbird now needs to involve in is, is growth for the future, be that by exploration and extending mine lives, because both mines have relatively short mine lives, and also uh, taking the Doobie project in Liberia forward so that we can um, present a, a real uh, value story to the market once people see it being built by, by credible partners or in any way we can engineer. Um, as, I, as I just said, obviously a key strategic focus for the year is deleveraging the balance sheet with $77 million due to be repaid this year. If, uh, if we are able to deliver as per all our mine plans and performance of the mines with no unforeseen interruptions, Hummingbird will be a very, very different beast a year from now uh, with that balance sheet strengthened in that way. We have obviously worked extremely closely with Chorus Bank and um, CIG Group, who underwrote the recent placement. And as a strategic partner and shareholder, um, this bank and CIG Group have been invaluable to us navigating the challenges of the last year. And I think positioning the company in a very strong position uh, as we move forward. As Tom mentioned, we have taken out um, price protection on 60,000 ounces of gold spread across the first three quarters of the year, 20,000 ounces in each quarter. Um, purpose of this obviously is to secure a gold price of over $2,000 an ounce to make sure that we can benefit from this higher gold price environment whilst we are so leveraged. Ideologically, we remain uh, of the view that we want to be an unhedged producer, but right now, I think the board has debated this uh, at length and we think it is prudent to just get some protection in place while the leverage is so high. Strategic exploration uh, is, is crucial for us at both sites, as I, as I mentioned earlier, short and mine lives, but if we can um, lengthen even a year's mine life at each mine, the, the impact on MPV and look through to cash flow and, and real value when you've got two producing mines is huge. Um, we have developed exploration programs for both mine sites, and we will be uh, giving you more news on these work programs as we go forward and develop them. But the, the focus is definitely that we need to explore internally at our mines to try to strengthen the mine lives uh, during the course of this year. So the investment case for Hummingbird, I think, is that we are now a multi-mine gold company. We have two operational mines. Um, we have strong organic growth internally from our existing mines going from uh, under 90,000 ounces of gold this year to getting towards 200,000 ounces of gold during 2024. We have a strong uh, partnership with Torres Bank, who supported our growth to this stage. And we believe that once these results translate into cash flow and deleveraging the balance sheet, then there is a significant equity opportunity in Hummingbird's equity at these prices. Um, and I think. I will very quickly go through these appendices, uh, the capital, but uh, this material is available on our website if people would like to look in more detail or ask any questions. Um, so. That's great. Uh, at that point, I think I'm going to hand back and take any questions. Thank That's you very great. much. Thank you, Dan, Tom. Thank you. thank you very much indeed for updating investors this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. But just while the guys take a few moments to review your questions submitted already, I'd just like to remind you that a recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your Investor Media Company dashboard. Um, Tom, Dan, uh, Edward, I'm going to bring back up your cameras uh, for the Q&A. Um, Edward, if I may just hand back to you, as you see, you've had a number of questions submitted from investors. You've also had a number of those uh, were pre-submitted. So if I may just hand back to you, and if I could ask you just to read out the questions and I'll pick up from you at the end. Yep, no problems. Um, well, thank you. We received uh, several questions from our, our website that have come through, which I'll run through, and then I've got a few that have come online as well. Um, and some of these have obviously been, been um, stipulated through 
what Dan has run from the, in the um, in the slides. Um, the first question we have is uh, why have you given such a broad guidance range for Carusa? Well, as Dan stipulated, um, with Carusa still ramping up, um, we we've given a broader range than probably normally is quantified, but we do expect to refine that later in the year as Carusa ramps up. The second question we have is um, why is ASIC at Carusa so high compared to previous indications? Again, as Carusa ramps up its production profile, um, we've got a relatively conservative profile for ASIC at Carusa. But as we look to the years going forward, we expect that ASIC profile to start to decrease quite materially. The next question we had is, uh, what is the production forecast at Carusa for Q124? Um, we don't actually provide um, quarterly guidance uh, production numbers, but um, as per the release that we had out this week, um, we do expect a sort of second half way to guidance as Carusa ramps up in terms of production. We do expect later in Q1 that Carusa will start to hit that uh, commercial production run rate. Um, then moving more to other questions on the Carusa. Do you anticipate any additional delays at Carusa? And have you resolved your issues remining fleet fuel and recruitment? I'll, I'll throw it back, back to you, Dan. Uh, no, I do not anticipate any further delays, but if I'm totally honest, I didn't anticipate um, the challenge with the fuel or some of the issues that we had last year. So it's always the unknown unknowns that blow you off course. I think that we have thrown a tremendous amount of work and effort in strengthening the team and identifying risks. And um, I'm so touching wood as I say this, but I hope that that is behind us and we can now ramp up efficiently and um, yeah. Okay, uh, next question was, um, what is your cash balance? Do you still have enough working capital to bring Carusa into production? Uh, throw that to you, Tom. Uh, thank you, Monty. Well, uh, our year-end cash balance was $7 million, and that, together with the $23 million balance of the placing completed in January, puts us in a good position to ramp up Carusa during Q1. Understood. Um, but a question on um, on Carusa. You you missed your H2, well, expectations in terms of production for Carusa. Um, how can we be sure that you're going to meet, meet your 24 guidance for 90 to 115,000 ounces? I think Dan, you've, you've talked through that, but a lot of work's been done on that. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't, I think so we missed guidance at Caruso is a little bit harsh, to be honest. I, I mean, we built the mine on time and it is running at capacity, which I think is what we said, is that we're running at a length of capacity by the end of the year. The challenge with production of ounces has largely been the um, fall behind in volume of earth move with the contract line of late mobilization, and that is, largely behind us, all the fleet is on site, but said notwithstanding the last month's fuel uh, issues, um, then yeah, I believe that we're well on schedule. Understood. Um, are you looking to hedge any production from Caruso once production is at capacity? That's one for you, Tom. Sorry, Tom's on mute. Oh. There you go. Sorry the, sorry, the 60,000 ounce of price protection we took on over the first three quarters of this year, that's that's on a group basis across both mines. Um, so, that, so so effectively, we've already hedged part of Carusa. Understood. Um, got a few questions on Yang Filila. Um, how, um, how will political issues in Mali affect Yang Filila um, operations? Maybe one for you, Dan, to talk a bit about that. Um, it's a fluid situation, I would say, in answer to that question. We continue to have a close dialogue with the government of Mali. We continue to work well with them. Um, we're currently in dialogue talking about a number of uh, issues uh, in the country and relating to um, what the government of Mali is looking to do with the mining code. Obviously, I'm mindful of the backdrop of uh, Mali and Niger and uh, Burkina leaving ECOWAS last week and um, I think nobody really has a crystal ball as to the full impact and implications and fallout of that. Operationally, uh, none of this has affected performance at Yamfalila in terms of supply chain ability to operate. So 
I think we're as well positioned as anyone to have a positive and constructive dialogue with the government of Mali, who are very pro-mining and supportive of the gold mining industry. I think at risk of being misquoted, I think gold mining provides something like 20% of um, GDP across the, across the country. So it's a huge industry for them. Understood. Um, a question on hedging for you, Tom. Would you consider hedging all of your production at Yankalila? Yeah, well, fundamentally, as a gold company, our view is we should be as unhedged as possible to give investors the maximum exposure to the gold price. However, um, due to the significant leverage, we believe it's prudent at the moment to have, have an element of price protection. And we are keeping that under under review as, as we unwind the debt. But um, well, I don't think we'd be looking to hedge everything. Understood. Um, got a few general questions that have come up. Um, are you likely to do another raise soon, come in? Um, well, the answer is no, we're fully funded. Um, we're ramping up production. Um, as Dan said, we're all the, the fleets available, fuels online. So no, we will not be doing any further raises soon and um, we're ramping up production at Carusa. Um, uh, question about Chorus. Um, will Chorus have a seat on the bar board at yeah, Mummybird? Um, and if so, who and when? Maybe that's one for you, Dan. Um, well, I mean, as a significant shareholder of Hummingbird, Chorus would be welcome to have a seat on the board at any time they wanted. And um, they are supportive. Their wise counsel is very valuable. And um, obviously, this would be a, a positive in lots of ways for the company. I mean, we have a very close uh, dialogue with CIG Group and with Chorus Bank. And at the moment, uh, I think the status quo is, is um, working for all parties. So at the moment, the status quo is what it is. Understood. Um, one for you, Tom, on debt. Are you still planning the repayment of the 77 million this year, which I know you talked about, but maybe give a bit more color at what yep. debt's been paid, which has also come through on the on the chat? No, ab absolutely. Um, Deleveraging our balance sheet is a fundamental part of our strategy this year. And 77 million debt repayments are scheduled and, and we're planning to make them. Understood. Um, one on, um, on Liberia, just in terms of Liberia, safe country to do business in, what are the relations with the, with the government uh, there? One for you, Dan. So the government have just had a democratic election. Joseph Borkai has been elected who um, replaced George Weir in a very tight election. I think the fact that the election was so tight and it went past with, uh, in a totally peaceful way is a great testament to actually a proper de democratic process, as all the watchdogs in the UN have commented. Um, the new uh, government is uh, well known to us and a totally professional outfit. And I continue to think Liberia is a much underrated country that has huge potential. And I, I think the answer is, is it a safe country to do business. I'd say one of the safest in uh, West Africa at the moment in lots of, uh, lots of ways. Understood. Um, got several questions that are coming online, which I can go through as well. Is diesel supply now back to normal? And what backup do you have in place against further uh, disruption? So maybe I can answer that. Um, yes, there is um, fuel going into the country. They put in a new line uh, over the last few weeks. Um, our fuel distribution's more back to normal. We are looking at uh, increasing our sort of storage on site as a, as a, a way to um, you know, mitigate any further disruptions going forward. Um, it's got another question. Do you plan to maintain a 200,000 ounce on year going forwards beyond 2026? Um, maybe Dan, do you want to just talk about say, the expectations of this 200,000 ounce type of target? Yeah, I mean, obviously uh, that would be a nice target to have in terms of um, the reality of doing that, I think, as I've said many times, I think Yam Falila will will become a, a you know as per guidance seventy five to eighty five thousand ounce a year producer. Um, as we get into the underground, uh, we will obviously look to extend those reserves as they're open, and hopefully that will continue for a long time. That will be part of our exploration plan for this year is to to lengthen that uh, mine life and those mine plans. So with Carusa. Um, I think it's entirely achievable. Understood. Uh, question about the debt. How much of the 77 million repayment this year is interest? Um, 
well, that 77 million is the capital payment plus um, we have interest on top of that. So that's the, the capital payment that's going to be made. Um, why is the production guidance lower at Yang Falila this year? Um, uh, can you give us a little bit of an update about that? So the 75 to, to uh, 85 versus the previous year of 80 to 90. Maybe sure. Derek can have a quick one at that. Largely because the main ore feed is um, from San Amali East, which is a lower grade pit than Kamana East, which is now exhausted as we develop the underground at Kamana East. Understood. Um, well, Bray, that, that looks to be the, the bulk of questions um, and that we've had come through in that on, online. So we yeah. hand it back to you or to Dan for closing comments. That's great, Edward. Thank you very much indeed for addressing those questions for investors. Um, Dan, um, Edward, Tom, I know investor feedback is important to you all. I'll shortly redirect those on the call to give you their thoughts and expectations. Uh, but I wondered if I may, Dan, just before doing so, just ask you for a couple of closing comments and then I'll send investors to give you their feedback. Uh, well, thank you very much, everyone, for dialing in to listen. I mean, the the closing thoughts from me are, you know, as we build Hummingbird, we want to build transparency and trust. So obviously, uh, your feedback is valued. Um, this year, the focus is on deleveraging the balance sheet, which really means focus on operational performance and making sure we deliver the volumes uh, and the grade to the mill at both sites. So if we deliver that, then I think that we're on a very um a very interesting path this year that's great dan tom edward thank you once again for updating investors companies ask investors not to close this session as we'll now automatically redirect you for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that management can better understand your views and expectations this may take a few moments to complete but i'm sure be greatly valued by the company on behalf of the management team of hummingbird resources plc we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation and good afternoon to you all